Hey, game makers! I've been going over fun ways to do character interaction, and I wanted to bring this plugin to your attention. Meet the OnFly Gab Window. La. Now, if you don't know what this plugin is, where have you been and what have you been doing with your life? Go, go get it now. <laughs> oh, you've been working on games, you say? Lucky. What the Gab Window does is it lets you create an automatic mini window for text instead of having to go into full-on cutscene mode for just a little bit of character babble. And trust me, that little bit of character babble can do so much for your game. <laughs> now, this plugin is incredibly easy to use, so let's go over the parameters real quick. The font name is the font it'll use. I'm using my preferred font just to test it, but by default it will be game font, and that should be fine unless you really want to make it fancy. Font size is for the font size. Character X and Y positions refer to where our character sprite and the text next to it will appear if we're not trying to call face graphics. The defaults should be fine unless we're using crazy weird size graphics. Okay, here things aren't as obvious. Base wait time is the amount of frames the window stays visible, since it'll auto fade out after a set time. How long the window stays open is also influenced by the next parameter, time per character. Basically, the number entered here is the amount of frames it will add to the time count per letter or text character. This will make it so lines with longer bits of text will stay on the screen longer than short ones. The default is 4, but we'll be using 1.5 because we don't need it that long for this example. The last time-related parameter is the fade rate, which is how many frames it takes to fade in and out. Anti-repeat will either allow or prevent gabs based on true or false, with the same settings from being queued. Though I don't imagine you need to worry about this too much. The last two sections are for the map and battle locations and colors. And yes, you can even use these in battles, it's awesome. Just set the first number based on how high or low you want them to show up on the screen, and you're good. The dim colors parameters are for both sides of the gradient that appears behind the text. You can change the red, green, blue, and alpha values to change its color and transparency. Pretty simple, right? Now let's get to actually making one of these. The help file gives a nice little blurb about it, and a list of commands, so I've got it copied in the notepad for easy access. First, let's create a parallel event. We'll want to go to page 3 of the event commands, and click plugin command. Now we got a whole bunch of commands we can use here. To make the gab window work, we need to use gab text and show gab. First, we're going to use gab text, simply enter the command, and write what you want it to say next to it like so. Next, we need show gab. Enter another plugin command with this code. Now, this will show the text. It will also show the one line of text and then exit the process until you leave and come back. If you have more than one gab window of text queued, it seems to continuously repeat until you exit the event with either a new page or erasing it. Anyway, one line of text isn't worth much on its own in these things, unless you're using them for something else. So let's go back into our event and add some. For adding, say, a face graphic or a character sprite for these, we'll be using one of these codes. They're pretty straightforward. You can use gab actor face or gab actor sprite to display an actor's respective graphic based on their ID number. Gab party face and gab party sprite will be used to call a specific party position. So let's say writing two will call the actor in the second party slot. Now these next few are a bit more complicated. Using gab face name and gab sprite name, you'll need to enter the name of the graphic you want to use. And then you'll also need to add in a command for their respective index code. So either gab face index or gab sprite index. This is used to select which graphic on the sheet it's going to use. Keep in mind that for these, the count starts at zero. So the first character on the sprite sheet would be labeled as zero, and the second labeled as one, and so on. Now, my custom face graphics don't exactly line up with this, so we'll be using gab face name to call a graphic I've made up called adjusted, which has my graphics moved up a bit. Now we add in gab face index, who's talking, and we're good. To make another segment of dialogue, it's easy to just copy everything you've made, and edit the bits you need to. Additionally, if you find you have so many of these that it gets confusing to look at, you can totally add in something like a blank comment in between them to separate them. If you open a menu while one of these is playing, it'll just restart from the last one you were on when you went into it. Currently, these don't seem to transfer to other maps. Common events and copying into the next map will just restart it from the beginning. Now, these will continuously repeat as I mentioned earlier. To get around this, we're just going to put a self-switch at the end of it and turn on a blank page. However, doing this means the gab window won't restart when you re-enter the map. We could also use the gab switch code and enter the idea of a switch to have it turn on its own switch when it's done. 
Wake commands can also be your friends here if you're planning on having other things play after it. We also have the Force Gab and Clear Gab codes. We'll basically use Force Gab if we had to stop the current Gab Chat and start a new one. Clear Gab would be used if you needed to stop the Gab Chat completely, say if the party walked into a real plot event. Great note, he's also working battle! So you just have to set them up on a battle page with any of the conditions you want to be set, and it will be glorious! The last code I want to talk about is Gab Sound. You just enter the plugin command Gab Sound and type the file name of the sound effect. You could have these play a noise when it activates, or you could have it for voice acting, you know, if your game does that. That way, the player can just listen to the random character banter without having to actually pay too much attention to it. If you're doing voice clips, just throw them into your game sound effects folder and type the file name next to Gab Sound. Dark Ominous Cave. Never seen one of those before. We're on a mission, you know. Can't you take anything seriously? Hey, I take lots of stuff seriously. Nothing important. Can't you two just be nice, quiet friends for once? With Catchy around, that's impossible. I heard that! Don't ask me why I think this is the coolest thing ever, I just do. Now, if your characters maybe aren't that chatty, you could also use it in other ways. Like... a treasure box message. A cell phone? An achievement announcer? A spawn alerter? I guess? Or NPC dialogue alerts? Thank you all for watching, and I will be back next time to talk about a few more fun ways to do extra character interaction-y thingies. Until next time, see you later, gamers!